Hey, um, Story Worlds. Uh, it's a, a tremendous pleasure to be here, and um, uh, it's kind of a dream of mine to be able to address uh, the publishing industry. We're going to uh, talk about something a little bit different from what you've been hearing thus far. Uh, we're we're going to talk about stepping back and looking at um, things from a, a little bit of a different perspective. Um, when I was young, I, um, uh, I, I, was, uh, I grew up um, uh, poor. I, I lived in the projects in the Lower East Side, and um, I was different from all the other guys. Uh, I was a dreamer. I was uh, into stories, into mythology, fairy tales, Godzilla. And, um, uh, and that made me very, very different. Um, uh, my mom was a free spirit, and at some point um, in the mid-1970s, she decided that if we're going to be poor, we might as well be poor in Honolulu, Hawaii. <laughs> they had a great uh, social service plan there. <laughs> um, in Honolulu, I was about 6,000 miles closer to Godzilla, so I was a little happy. Um, and actually, a, a kid that I met there uh, handed me a comic book that I had to read backwards. Um, it was called uh, Kikaida, and um, uh, this, um, this blew my mind because it was an amazing uh, story, very dramatic, very serious, but obviously aimed at me. And um, uh, when I finished, uh, when the kid finished read, translating it for me, he said, oh, and by the way, the story actually continues in a TV series which is coming on the air on Kiku television um, in a few weeks. I was like, really? What do you mean continues? <laughs> The story's over. We're just going to see the story all over again. He said, no, no, no. This is the, the, the prequel. <laughs> um, you're going to actually see the, the, the drama on, on TV. And there it was, 42 weeks of Kikaider. And this is amazing, this colorful dude, uh, clobbering monsters, uh, proto-Power Ranger stuff. I had been raised on uh, Jabberjaw and Grape Ape. This was the 70s. <laughs> um, uh, so my mind was blown. In the last episode, um, everybody died because such is the way of the Japanese. Um, I, 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 what? <laughs> the villain got away, Kikaider's kind of smashed up, and it's over. Um, and uh, and I, I told the friend, what's the deal? How, did, how could it end this way? He said, well, you know, in, uh, in a few weeks, there's a movie where the, the story actually really ends. And I said, movie? On, on TV? He said, no, it's in a theater, uh, one theater, the American Theater in, in Honolulu, which is outside of town. I had to take a bus. I'd never taken a bus before. I was 11. Um, in, in Honolulu, and, and, uh, and it was a long, long way. When I got to the theater by myself, because no one would take me, it was leaned over as if it was in an earthquake, the theater. Inside the theater, I'm on the seats, I'm pulling my legs up because there's stuff moving on the floor. It was horrific. Um, and yet, there he was in 3D, red and blue, um, uh, uh, fighting all 40 monsters from the series uh, and, and the villain, and it was so bad he needed his brother, Kikaider01, to join him. He was from another series, <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and they kicked ass. Uh, on my way home, people, on my way home, I thought to myself, I want to do this. I, I want to tell stories that are so compelling, so amazing, that a chicken like me would jump from one thingy to another media platform and, and, and chase this story all the way into the outskirts of Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, it, it, was, it was as if I was in another universe, and um, the deeper I went, the more wonderful, the more spectacular, the more dramatic it would be. What, um, what I would realize many, many years later uh, would be that this is something called transmedia storytelling, and it was the most, and, and it's, it's, it's going to be uh, the most powerful form of, of uh, narrative uh, yet devised simply because it's, well, it's, it's hitting you from all sides. Um, what, um, 
what it resulted in was, was a fierce ambition to, to do this. And, um, and as you heard from the intro there, I, I managed to, to do okay. Um, I'm a consultant uh, to the big Hollywood studios. Uh, I worked with uh, James Cameron on, on Avatar, helping to um, uh, assemble and devise the mythology behind Pandora and the whole history of the Avatar universe. Um, uh, we took Transformers and, and turned it into uh, something that's going to launch on the hub, uh, a, a new TV uh, a station. Um, uh, took Halo, which is a first-person shooter game that had a problem moving across other media platforms and, um, and kind of uh, broke it into story um, and, and kind of wove an epic narrative through its 150,000 years of continuity. Um, even something like Dexter, where uh, um, uh, Showtime wanted to leverage new ways of, of extending uh, the, the property across different media platforms uh, was something that we participated in. And of course, uh, Starlight Runner is the foremost authority on Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, Tron uh, is, is spectacular because uh, it is formally a transmedia implementation. Sean is, uh, 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 Tron is produced by Sean Bailey, Tron Legacy, the new incarnation of this franchise coming from the Walt Disney Company. And what's interesting is that Sean embraced the notion of telling this story across multiple media platforms. And, um, uh, and guess what? Sean is now the head of the Walt Disney uh, movie studio. Um, I, I guess um, uh, Bob Iger uh, agrees that, that there's something to all this. Um, how did we get to this point? Well, it all started with books. It all started with the printing press and our ability to, to share and love story uh, together in a kind of communal fashion. Um, uh, Dracula, um, everyone was talking about it. Uh, it became a stage play. Um, uh, Superman started again in publishing and became a radio play. Uh, in the radio uh, a serial, they started adding additional components to the Superman mythology. Uh, things like Perry White and certain types of kryptonite and so forth because they needed to jazz up the story and that stuff dovetailed back into the publishing uh, um, aspect of Superman and became part of the formal mythology. Uh, after the Second World War, uh, Japan got back up on its feet by establishing with the United States a no the notion of full cooperation with uh, um, uh, various businesses that would have otherwise been rivals. Uh, when that happened, um, ideas, concepts, narratives started zooming uh, uh, through uh, across different media platforms because everybody was cooperating so closely. That eventually would be exported to um, uh, the United States and cause a lot of te school teachers grief. Um, of course, uh, George Lu Lucas was looking uh, east uh, as well and, um, and kind of uh, uh, expounded on that business model. And, uh, and he started a, a little uh, franchise that, that became more and more successful as that universe extended across various media platforms. And uh, the trick with the Blair Witch Project was that it included you. Um, you saw that website, you emailed uh, your friends about it. Was it real? Is it not? There was discussion, uh, you commiserated, and became a part of the mythology. Uh, the, the movie almost was superfluous, although it made big bucks. Um, in, the, in the past 10 years, the notion of telling your story across multiple media platforms um, entered the, the kid business because they're the early adopters, and of course, um, uh, Bob Iger took over from Michael Eisner and said, hey, how about um, uh, taking our intellectual properties and really kind of working on them so that they manifest in different and interesting ways across different media platforms, and you get something uh, uh, more like Lost than High School Musical, uh, but um, you, you're starting to get the picture. It's, it's something uh, that, that is engaging and, um, and develops these fanatical uh, fan bases. Uh, what's interesting about uh, fairies is this is a multi-billion dollar uh, property that was launched through uh, Disney's publishing uh, division. 
and, um, and uh, that's a big point we're going to get back to. So what exactly uh, is um, transmedia? Well, what I'm not going to talk about here, sorry guys, is all these different devices that you've been hearing about all day. Um, they are, um, they're spectacular. There are uh, many tools, uh, um, uh, many colors on the palette from which you can use uh, to create uh, transmedia narrative, uh, but that's beside the point. That stuff, it's all going to come and go. Remember MySpace? Um, what is uh, transmedia storytelling? Transmedia storytelling is the, um, the process of conveying messages, themes, or storylines to a mass audience through the artful and well-planned use of multiple media platforms. Um, it's, it's kind of a philosophy. It's an implementation process uh, that combines um, uh, talent and, um, and creativity with, with marketing and technology. And by doing that, you are making the story uh, larger and lasts longer, and the results are incredible. You have this intense loyalty when people dive more and more deeply into um, uh, certain kinds of stories. And, uh, and ultimately, it's going to make you money. Um, so what's the point here? The point here is I've been dealing with Hollywood, guys. I've been dealing with the people who are looking for the ideas. You have them. You're in possession of them. People come to you with the seeds of these ideas, and your companies cultivate them and put them in the form, the one form, that all the rest of the world, for some weird reason, still worships. The book. Uh, even the comic book. Um, it's, it's print. It's publishing. That's really important. Um, now, uh, there's a certain elegance to transmedia that I want you to think about. Um, in the kind of old days, old school, a movie comes out, and, um, and maybe there's a video game knockoff of it and a novelization. Um, and your to the totality of your experience of these things is okay, you know, the movie was probably the, the, the lead platform or even the book, and everything else, you know, was, was, was kind of cool, maybe sometimes not. Um, in the case of transmedia, you are starting from scratch to design how this narrative is going to roll out, and it's going to roll out in pieces. The driving platform could often be the book. It, it certainly is with, uh, with certain huge uh, best-selling uh, uh, book series for young adults. Um, uh, but when you uh, uh, create these pieces carefully and you partner up with people who are capable of helping you to do this, um, you get uh, your audience to piece these things together. And when they're doing that work and it fits well, there is kind of like this ecstasy, this, this, this thrill of, of actually formulating it all together, and that is what's creating this intense pleasure and this intense loyalty. Uh, you're engaging the fan. You're satisfying the, the reader. Uh, they're coming back. They're telling other people about you. Um, uh, eventually, um, they're falling in love with all these other incarnations. They're not incarnations that repeat and repeat and repeat. They're, they're extensions of the story, of the narrative, um, that they're bringing together and, and showing to the rest of the world. These people will light torches and, and claim ownership over your universe, uh, your story world, and that is where uh, you get these incredible pop culture um, uh, phenomena. Um, uh, we have to distinguish between uh, protected properties, Harry Potter, Twilight. These are by authors who are putting kind of fortresses around the intellectual property. Um, there can be no iteration of Harry Potter without uh, it basically being written by uh, J.K. Um, uh, so, uh, or, or, um, or Stephanie Meyer and, and, and Twilight. So, um, we are always going to see reiterations of the same story over and over again on various media platforms. That's kind of like cable in the 1970s. 
Um, what I'm recommending is that we consider open properties um, where the publisher and the author are uh, uh, teaming up a bit uh, to um, examine how different teams of creatives can manifest different aspects of these universes across different media platforms. That's what's really um, uh, going on with transmedia storytelling. It happens when you can engage the visionary with a team of people who uh, the visionary, the author, can genuinely trust. Same with the publisher genuinely trust that team or that single producer uh, to be able to build the relationships with these other media companies and, um, and extend that intellectual property. Um, uh, I know I'm, uh, I'm going to go further, but, uh, but stick with me, people. Um, it, what is a story world? A story world is something uh, that deserves a serious approach. The, the narrative um, is, uh, is taken as a complete a uh, platform neutral world that, um, that has a past, a present, and a future. It's larger than the book. So you are devising a mythology for your intellectual property that is separate from the book series and will be used to help extend the IP across different media platforms. Um, you are uh, um, uh, extending also the core messages and themes of that intellectual property to assure the integrity of the intellectual property. Um, and you are building arcs that reach out, that could reach out for years and years uh, so that you have excellent content, so that we don't get stuck with a situation like what happened with Sony Pictures and Spider-Man 4, where suddenly out of nowhere, a script was dumped on them that they didn't like, suspending and pushing off a, a billion dollar windfall uh, for potentially uh, years. You have to um, know that, um, that the world is looking uh, to publishing still to this day for the source of all creativity, for the source of great stories. Um, I'm recommending that, um, that you take a, a certain hold of, of vision and, um, and, and start developing in-house. Start thinking about how you can establish as publishers in partnership with your authors a, um, a, a serious authorship over the intellectual property, where you, you're building these mythologies, where you're actually seriously thinking about, perhaps with close partners, how these things will manifest off uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, different media platforms and extend through the years. Uh, when you do that and you have a clear vision, you have leverage over the rest of the entire entertainment industry. Uh, I know this. I've seen it my, myself countless times. Um, with your initial rollout, the publication of the books, you are building your audience, you are building leverage, you are putting a price tag on your story and your story world, and then you're developing a strategy for how it will manifest everywhere. Um, so who's doing this? Well, um, there are uh, some companies that are, uh, that are doing it, uh, some more successfully than others, and, um, and these are really innovative and interesting. Some of them are not really the kinds of publishers uh, who are mostly in this room. Um, um, so uh, the reason why you, uh, most of your companies are not is because there are some obstacles. I've done a little informal survey. <laughs> um, uh, your authors. Well, a lot of your authors are established and would never uh, think of actually partnering with you as a publisher and then sharing in the revenues that come in transmedia. Uh, well, all right, goodbye. Um, uh, there are plenty of new ones that are coming in, um, uh, new people who are partnering with talent. Yeah, yeah, the agents. I've heard this one. The agents will never allow this kind of deal. Well, don't talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, find authors, find talent that, that will be willing to work with you. And you're going to provide value uh, to that author and to that author's agent by extension because you are going to develop a major strategy, a significant plan behind the, the intellectual property that you choose. Um, uh, then uh, 
um, you're going to go out and, and get media partners, people who are coming in uh, close to the beginning, who see the vision, and can help you retain your clout and your control, uh, and obviously your access to revenue streams. The biggest obstacle, of course, is fear. Get over it. Uh, melt the silos within your companies, particularly you who understand what the heck I'm talking about. I can hear it back and forth. Some of you actually understand this. You um, have the potential um, to influence what's going on inside uh, your, your houses and get people to start uh, uh, thinking about this. I'm a member of the Producers Guild of America, uh, uh, as are many of the people who made the big Oscar-winning uh, uh, pictures um, all these years. Uh, the Producers Guild of America has declared, um, and they're in the process of ratifying, um, that there is something called a transmedia producer. These are the guys and girls that, that you're going to want to uh, team up with uh, as consultants to help you do this. I don't expect that you're going to learn what the video game industry is all about. Uh, but there are people out there who can form bridges between publishing and these different media platforms who can assist you and who can actually creatively help your talent and your marketing teams to build these story worlds, create these presentations, these mythologies as they call them, and, and shop them and, and Doing this will earn you the extra cut of, um, of these billion dollar franchises. Um, I know we hurled real fast through all that. Sorry, guys. Um, if you have any other questions about it, please do feel free uh, to contact me. I'm a believer in this, and, um, and uh, I'm carrying the torch uh, that leads all the way back to um, uh, the experience of wonder flipping through the pages of the books that you guys created when I was a kid. Thank you. Thank you so much.